Hello, I'm Matu Jamir and you're watching the I Hornbill TV's English News Bulletin. Now, headlines. In reply to a start question as to the utilization of rupees 200 crore, which was sanctioned by the Center for the Preparation of COVID-19 in 2019 to 2020, Minister of Health and Family Welfare Department, as Hong Yu Pong, informed that rupees 246.9 crore was funded to the state for COVID-19 related expenses in 2019 to 2020. Nagaland's new political party, the Rising People's Party, will initiate crowdfunding to complete the Foothill Road, which is now known as Trans Nagaland Expressway, and ensure its completion. The Supreme Court on Thursday observed that the allegations about the central government allegedly using Israeli software Pegasus to spy on people are serious if the news reports are correct. In reply to a start question as to the utilization of rupees 200 crore, which was sanctioned by the Center for the Preparation of COVID-19 in 2019 to 2020, Minister of Health and Family Welfare Department, as Pang Yu Pom, informed that rupees 246.9 crore was funded to the state for COVID-19 related expenses in 2019 to 2020. Out of this, an amount of rupees 127.33 crore was received for expenditure by the Department of Health and Family Welfare. Home informed that the remaining 119.57 crore rupees was for expenditure by the Home Department and SDMA and other departments. The minister also furnished details of the expenditure incurred in various aspects such as medical equipment, civil supplies, infrastructure, excrusia for frontline workers, deaths and other while to the highest amount incurred by the NSDMA. Two ministers of the Assam government, Atul Bora and Ashok Singhal, reached Mizoram on Thursday to hold talks with officials from Mizoram days after forces from the two neighboring states indulged into a violent fight along the border, leading to multiple fatalities and several injuries. In its minutes of meeting, the governments of Assam and Mizoram agreed to take forward the initiatives taken by the Ministry of Home Affairs, Government of India and Chief Ministers of Assam and Mizoram to remove tensions prevailing around the interstate borders and to find lasting solutions to the disputes through discussions. The representatives from Mizoram, Lal Chai Liana, who is the Home Minister of Mizoram, and Van Lang Ai Sala, Home Secretary Mizoram, conveyed condolences for the loss of lives on 26 July 2021, while also conveyed a speedy recovery to those injured. Further, both the state governments agreed to maintain peace in the interstate border areas and welcome deployment of neutral forces by Government of India in this regard. For this purpose, both the states shall not send their respective forest and police forces for patrolling, domination, enforcement or for fresh deployment to any of the areas where confrontation and conflict has taken place between the police forces of the two states during recent times. So this would include all such areas along the Assam Mizoram border in the districts of Karim Ganj, Haila Kandi, and Kachar, Assam, Mamit, and Kulasib district, Mizoram. Lastly, representatives of both states agreed to take all necessary measures to promote, preserve, and maintain peace and harmony amongst the people living in Assam and Mizoram, particularly in the border areas. The Nikki Sumi-led NSC and GPRN has accused the Indian security forces of conducting unauthorized raids and illegal detention of the group's members. The organization issued a press release on August 5th stating the allegations. The NSC and GPRN stated that the Indian security forces are conducting unauthorized raids and illegal detention of its members. The NSC and GPRN questions whether such activities are being done under the directive of the government of India or whether the government had lost control of its security forces. The organization listed what it said was unauthorized arrest of its members in various districts during the past few months. Also, the Indian security forces have on numerous occasions violated the sanctity of the CFSB office. 
approved by the Ministry of Home Affairs, it stated, physical torture and detention of CFSP members cannot be left unmentioned, it stated. If any untoward incident arises that hampers the peace process, the honours would solely be with the Government of India, the press release stated. Nagaland's new political party, the Rising People's Party, will initiate crowdfunding to complete the Foothill Road, which is now known as Trans Nagaland Expressway, and ensure its completion. This was announced on Thursday by the Joel Naga, the president of RPP at the press conference at Ura Hotel in Kohima. The RPP president said that because the Assam Nagaland border is an issue, the Foothill Road is very important as it will ensure that the state do not go through Assam. He appealed to the people to come together and get out from the comfort zone and unite to ensure that the roads are completed. The 100 km People's Highway project in Manipur was completed within a year's time with only 40 lakh. But the state here has already spent 70 lakh in the past nine years and is yet to be complete. And so why the delay, he said. He also stated that the committee is aggressively pursuing the issue and, and acknowledged the committee's members for the job. Joel Naga also said that the crowdfunding for the Foothill project will take time and the people will not complain to the government but come together as one. He informed that the Rising People's Party will initiate a campaign on the crowdfunding event which will begin by August or in the first week of September. A multidisciplinary central team comprising three senior doctors have been deputed by the Union Health and Family Welfare Ministry to help the state's health department in the management of the COVID-19 situation in Manipur. Doctors were deputed on Wednesday as a follow-up of the meeting between Chief Minister N. Biren Singh and Prime Minister Narendra Modi at New Delhi. The team will specifically look at the areas of testing, including genomic sequencing for SARS-CoV-2 variants. It will also look into the contact tracing, including surveillance, containment operations, as well as observation of COVID-appropriate behaviors. The team will also consider the availability of hospital beds and logistics, including ambulances and hospital-wise case fatality analysis. It will further look into the COVID-19 vaccination progress in the state. Further, the expert team will assess, suggest remedial actions and report every evening at 7 p.m. on the public health activities being undertaken besides submitting updates to the state government. Supreme Court on Thursday observed that allegations about the central government allegedly using Israeli software packages to spy on people are serious if news reports are correct. A bench of Chief Justice of India N. V. Ramana and Justice Surya Kant, however, asked people who approached the top court why was any criminal complaint not registered by persons affected by the snooping. The court wants to ask some questions and no doubt the allegations are serious if reports in newspapers are correct, the bench stated. The majority of petitions rely on foreign newspapers, but is there any verifiable materials for the court to order an inquiry asked the bench during the hearing? The top court was hearing a batch of petitions seeking a court-monitored probe into the reports of government allegedly using Israeli software packages to spy on politicians, activists and journalists. The bench asked senior advocate Kapil Sibal appearing for senior journalists and Ram and Sashi Kumar why after two years petitions have been filed when in 2019 itself reports surfaced regarding the use of packages to infiltrate WhatsApp. During the clashes with Afghan security forces, at least 375 Taliban terrorists were killed and 193 more injured. Stephen's ministry in its statement said that the operations were conducted in different provinces of Afghanistan, which inflicted heavy casualties to the Taliban. According to a report by ANI, the operations were conducted in the provinces of Nuristan, Lokar, Kandahar, Oruskan, Herat, Jauzjan, Palk, Samangan, Helmand, Kapisa, and Palkan. In Afghan National Defense and Security Forces' latest airstrikes, 20 Taliban were killed and 12 more wounded in the provincial capital, Lashkarka of Helmand province, as per the ministry statement. Taliban spokesperson Zabilua Mujahid denied the group's terrorists being killed in Helmand province and claimed Afghan government forces' airstrikes have targeted civilian people. The Afghan National Defense and Security Forces recently recaptured the Nijrab district of Kapisa province, backed by the Taliban, Kama Press reported. 
Amid the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, the government has de decided to give free health insurance of Rs 5 lakh to children up to the age of 18 years who were orphaned due to the pandemic, said Union Minister Anurag Thakur. The premium will be paid by Prime Minister's Citizen Assistance and Relief in Emergency Situations Fund, he added. As part of the steps taken to take care of children affected by COVID-19, Children up to 18 years will be provided free health insurance of Rs 5 lakhs under Ayushman Parat and its premium will be paid by PM Cares, Tagore tweeted on Wednesday. He shared an image along with a tweet which read that children up to the age of 18 years who have lost both their parents or guardians will be given a monthly stipend and on turning 23 years old, an amount of Rs 10 lakh would be given. According to an official statement, the PM Cares for Children scheme was launched by Prime Minister Narendra Modi on May 29, 2021 for the children. It aims to support children who have lost porta parents or legal guardian or adoptive parents or surviving parent to the COVID-19 pandemic during the period starting from March 11, 2020. The objective of the scheme is to ensure comprehensive care and protection of children in a sustained manner and enable their well-being through health insurance, empower them through education and equip them for self-sufficient existence with financial support on reaching 23 years of age. Organized by the Music Department of Sataka Town Baptist Church, a two-day music workshop is underway at Sataka Town Baptist Church with Vivika Lee Yepto as the resource person for the event. The choir members of the church are attending the two-day workshop updates on August 5, Thursday stated. During the workshop, Yepto spoke about the importance of music, choir etiquettes, importance of vocal warm-ups, and about the fundamentals of music. She said that even Jesus, during the Last Supper, with his twelve disciples, sang songs, and if they want to live a life commanded by Jesus, singing songs should be given utmost importance, updates informed. Yepto added that there were all Christians and the Bible commands every Christian, not just the one with good voices to sing songs. Earlier, the workshop began with an invocation pronounced by Rev. Kukado Chishi, pastor of STPC. Celebrations broke out at the residence of Olympian Lila Kanda Sharma at Ahal Loop in Imphal East District of Manipur after India clinched the hockey bronze medal by defeating Germany at the Tokyo Olympics. Family members and people from the locality came out in large numbers beating drums and performing the traditional dance form Tapal Chongpa. Celebrations in several other places were also reported in Imphal. Kunjan Rani Devi, the mother of Nila Kanda Sarma, said she feels elated by India's performance and that the emotion in the locality was spontaneous joy because they had earlier become somewhat disheartened after India's previous hockey match. Devi said when she talked to Sarma before leaving for Tokyo, the message was that the team would not return home without winning a medal. Manipur Hockey Association Secretary Siram Nekin congratulated the players, especially to the state players Nila Kanda Sarma and officials of the Team India. It is a proud moment for the state that Manipur's Nilakanda Sharma secured a goal too during the match with Japan. Since the beginning, Manipur players have been taking a key role in the promotion of hockey in India. This time, Manipur players Nilakanda Sharma, who secured a bronze medal, has been a key player of the Indian team. Not only him, state female player Sushila Chanu Pukram Pam is also in the women's team which will compete for the third place with Great Britain on 6th August. Wrestler Ravi Kumar Dahiya suffered a 4 by 7 defeat to Zarev Yugiv of the Russian Olympic Committee in the men's 57kg category final as he settled for a silver medal at Tokyo Olympics on Thursday. The 23-year-old became the second Indian wrestler after Sushil Kumar to win a silver medal in wrestling for the country. Ravi gave his all in the final bout, but it was the Russian wrestler who proved his supremacy at the biggest stage. Yugev is also a silver and bronze medalist in the 2018 and 2019 World Championship as he lived up to the expectations in the final bout. Dahiya had lost to Yugve at the 2019 World Championship also. The 23-year Dahiya had won both his previous bouts on technical superiority in route to the final to become the second Indian wrestler to win the silver after Sushil Kumar. 
As Indian men's hockey team clinched bronze medal at the Tokyo Olympics, Minister of Sport and Youth Services in Punjab, Rana Gurmeet S. Sodi, on Thursday, announced a cash award of Rs. 1 crore each for players from the state. Rana Gurmeet made the announcement on Twitter. On this historic day for Indian hockey, he tweeted, he is delighted to announce a cash award of Rs. 1 crore each to players from Punjab. The people await their return to celebrate the much-deserved medal in the Olympics, read a tweet by Rana Kurmit. It took 41 years, but the dream of every Indian was finally realized on Thursday, as the men's hockey team beat Germany 5-4 to win the bronze medal here at the Oil Hockey Stadium North Pitch. The men in blue showed absolute resilience, strength and winning spirit to register a remarkable comeback win against a strong German team. That's all we have for now and also for other updates, please do follow us on our social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and YouTube at Hornbill TV Official. Thank you.